and how we formed, why we're here, um, like where, where we're going with this. Um, so it's been about a year, or well, over a year actually, we started uh, June of 2014, and here we are. So uh, thanks for everyone who's been supporting us, who's been here every single month. I know there's a few people who come every single month and just want to say thank you for that. Um, so the reason we started was to, uh, we wanted to connect business people um, and just different individuals from, from different walks of life. Um, and really showcase what the front porch is doing here in Akron, and also just the great things and the valiant efforts that they're making through South Street Ministries, trying to um, really repair and, and help the South, South Akron and Summit Lake area. So um, that's basically why we're here. So um, we based on four main principles to connect, encourage, empower, and inspire each other. Um, so, like I said, we meet here on the first Tuesday of every month, 7.30 to 9, um, and we connect like-minded business professionals who share similar core values, uh, struggles, and a uh, uh, calling to grow personally and professionally. Um, secondly, we um, encourage a building of the business community through servant leadership while empowering each other to become uh, productive, uh, profitable, and effective business individuals who blend together their faith and good business practices. And then lastly, we meet here once a month to inspire each other, talk about friends and family, uh, ways to improve our city, and we also listen to a uh, compelling presentation from a community leader. Um, so that is why we're here. And um, just wanted to say, let's see, so next month is going to be uh, Gina Burke and Tom Crane from the Gates Organization of Akron. Um, they'll be talking about sustainability in Akron um, through the Gates Network, which is the Greater Akron Innovation Network for Sustainability. So that will be September 1st. Um, and then does anyone like to open up to announcements? Does anyone have anything that they'd like to share? Any upcoming events that they know about?
round of applause real quick.
around at a table and share a meal and share their stories and help each other. And it's really neat for our families to have that aspect because even in their situation, the, the, and you're asking why me at times, is that then they realize I can help somebody even right now. So they help each other. When one's having a bad day, they help the family that's having, uh, or having a good day, they help the family that's having a bad day. And then in a week, it's reversed. That family who had the bed, they said, oh, I know, we went through that last week. So it's a powerful thing uh, when our families get to share that time in there. And it's out of the hospital. The hospital's fabulous, right? I mean, it's world-class care that we have for pediatrics here in town. Uh, however, it is a hospital. There's white walls, there's pages, there's things going on that even if it's not your child, it will affect you. So it's nice to be able to give them that space to sort of, you know, just be more emotional and, and find that support and give that support. Now, every evening at 5.30, we provide a full meal for all of our families, which is guaranteed, uh, which is another powerful point. Uh, just like this, right? Food brought us together today. We all need to start our day with this. And when you are overwhelmed and don't have enough sleep and then don't eat, you know what happens, right? You don't think as clear, you can't handle as much, you get more emotional, and your kids see all that. So we promise our families at dinner every night, there's about 40 to 50 local restaurants that donate to our meal program. We have volunteer cooks that cook food that's been donated, and then we have groups that will come in and sponsor meals for us. So we promise, and that means all the way till 5 o'clock, and we realize the caterer forgot us, and we call pizza and we're great to pizzas. So we promise them. And that meal, uh, we have found in the last, I would say, five to seven years, that the, our meal program portion of our mission is one of the most important aspects of what we do. People can sleep in the, the lounge chair next to their child's bed. People will sleep in their cars if they have to. Like you can figure that out. You can sleep, you know, in the waiting areas over at the hospital if you had to. But getting food constantly, breakfast, lunch, and dinner all day is terribly expensive, and there's not very many options. And so we found that that's a big need that is a is an unmet need can't be taken care of in very many creative ways. So each day those families come, and we only ask for 30 years, we've only asked for a $10 per night donation. And that's only if they're able. And if they're able, is determined by them. We don't ask, no, there's no bills, there's no statements, there's no, um, well, how much, you know, do you have jobs, do you not, there's none of that. You decide. If you're able, you give me something. If you're not, I take your Hey, we're glad you're going home. So about, and it usually isn't about in the range of 30% of our families are able to cover that $10 per night donation. So in about 70% we cover 100% while they stay with us. And that all comes back to our community support. So those little bits, you know, that come in, we have a share night program for that $10 that then we'll filter through. And it's really neat when our families will say, like, well, well how, do you, how do I not have to pay? All right, it's taken care of, don't worry about it. That, that check-in moment, I wish I could bring you all with me to see this, is that when our families are there and we're checking them in and they say, but, but I can't, I can't pay you. And we go, don't worry about it. And we'll take care of that when you go to leave. And they go, but no, no, you don't understand. When I go to leave this place, I can't give you anything. And we say, don't worry about it. And there's this moment where you'll see those shoulders go down and you see that side and they realize that we're just there for them. We just want to help them. And it, oh, it's my favorite moment. Now, my least favorite moment is that in the last several years, in the range of 5,000 to 6,000 times a year, we have to tell a family, I'm sorry, we're full. We don't have room. That's my least favorite. Because after we say that, the question we get is, well, what am I supposed to do? And we have nothing to tell them. You know. Um, at that point, we, we just try to soften the blow, you know, hang on, as soon as we get something, we'll let you know, please call us as many times as you need to, you know, check with social work in case there's any vouchers you can get. We just try to give them something of an avenue so they don't feel like they can get a uh, But our house is way <coughs> too small. So our 20 rooms are full every night with a wait list. Um, last night, we probably had about 20 on our wait list last night when I left. and. That's been trending that way, obviously, with the growth of the hospital. What's happened at Children's, which 
yeah, and for those of us that live here in Northeast Ohio, we're, we're lucky what we've got in our backyard, is that it's becoming a destination hospital. So not only care for regional, I think I was just looking, we were at 46 Ohio counties last year, 23 states, eight countries we served within that one year, 2014, is that what we're seeing now is that children's getting doctors that people are coming from all over the country and the globe to see. It's becoming a destination hospital. And there's an eye doctor there who, I mean, they literally come from around the globe to see that particular eye doctor for that particular surgery. And so we're seeing that need increase. So not only are we capturing more local families, but now that obviously children's footprint has become much larger in Northeast Ohio, and then it's just spreading out regionally and nationally. So the need for us has gone up. And the, we, we have started, we, we decided then to do a campaign to expand the house. So what we're doing, which is so exciting, and if you've been down there, Locust Street's been closed for the last three weeks because we're relocating the X lines, which is awesome because that's the first step in our project, is that we have a $10 million campaign. We have about 8-5 committed to that campaign right now. We'll be starting a public phase in the spring of next year is we will be expanding our house from 20 rooms and we're looking in the range of 60. And I say in the range is that we, um, our architect is GPD, uh, our builder is Tenarius, and then our owner's representative is HR Gray, who are all three local Akron companies and firms that we went through a long interview process and we were very happy to select local companies to work with. And we will be expanding that building and we actually are in design phase right now. So we had some renderings out and different things like that for the last couple years that we're tweaking. So I don't have a, I have a picture in one of our brochures to see, but just know it's going from really little to real big. <laughs> However it ends up looking. So what we will do is Locust Street in front of our house, for those of you that know, uh, goes away. And we will extend onto our building to the west. And then we will add on to that building and then renovate our existing building in some form, in some way, to get it to all work. Uh, as, the, as the architects were approved the design. So that will be, the beginning will be breaking ground this spring. For that, we will continue to operate through that process. Uh, and then hopefully by the end of 2017, we will be up and running as a full function of the 60 room house. Uh, is it enough rooms? Probably not, but it'll do a whole lot more than it does today. Uh, you know, how, how big is too big? How long does it take you to raise the money compared to getting it done? Those are all the things that went into a, a very large feasibility study for us to determine what to do. So we've got big things coming, and we're very excited about that. We'll have a lot more families to serve, but they're there to be served. And, and in, in whatever way we can do that, that's what, I, that's what we want to do. Uh, and again, the simplicity of the mission is we just need to do more of it, right? The power of a hot cup of coffee is amazing to a parent who's been up all night and has to wake up and get to the hospital at 8 in the morning to talk to a doctor about a lot of stuff they don't even know what he's talking about, right? And so we just, we will just expand that what we do for them. Does anybody have any questions yet? No questions. Yes. What's your annual budget? Say that again? What's your annual budget right now? My annual budget right now is about 925000 so the, the new budget, you know, as we increase staff, which another partner from Ron McDonald House, Jeanette Andreski, is here today, uh, which will lead me into money, <laughs> right? What comes down to money? But is with that, our campaign, our $10 million campaign, where we were a small staff, we had four staff members um, before we started this project. And the hospital graciously, under the Promise campaign, where they were raising $60 million, 10 of that 60 was for us. So they allowed us the use of their development and foundation department. So John Doyle, the head of that department, has, is on our board and worked with us so that we had some development staff because we had none. And they've helped us with that big project. So what we've done now to start to extend ourselves in the future is we've hired our first, very first development director, which is Jeanette, and we will be starting our own fundraising and outreach and development because the budget will double, if not more than that, for running that kind of facility. It probably won't triple because your core items are, you know, your expensive items, your kitchen, like that is not an exactly tripling. Uh, but we will, there's a big shift in our history. When the house opened in 85, it was a million dollars to build it. So we raised a million, not we, I wasn't, I wasn't 
than this at that point. But we, the community raised a million dollars and opened the house debt free. The capital campaign people at that point, Bill Constantine at the hospital, said, well, you're going to raise another million. They raised two million. Open the house debt free, put a million bucks in the bank. So we lived on that endowment for 30 years. So whatever we didn't receive by private donations, we would offset with those funds from the endowment. And that worked for 30 years. But now, hindsight's 2020, right? Is that because we could make it work, we didn't feel it was right to go out after grants and to go after community fundraisers and to go after other community dollars because we were okay. But that's what kept us so quiet. That's why people don't know we're there. That's why we don't have a foundation and uh, uh, connections with businesses locally and supporters locally, unless you had a need to find us. And so we are now making up for lost time to become like almost every other charity that exists in nonprofit of doing fundraisers and community outreaches and letting people know what we're doing down there and how they can help. So it's a whole different focus on our operational side of now you know, realizing that, that that is an element that we'll have to do. The endowment that we had, um, we had about four million in that endowment today, and all of that went to the capital. So our savings account is gone, <laughs> <laughs> which is slightly intimidating. However, we are so determined that we know we'll do just fine. And it's just, an ex again, extension of our staff, an extension of our footprint, an extension of our voice. Uh, which obviously we just so believe in and so love that, that I have no doubt that we will, we will find our way. Uh, I personally found out about Robin McDonald House back in 01. I read about it in the Beacon. We needed volunteers on Saturday morning. And so I started as a volunteer every other Saturday morning from 9 to 1. And then it slowly morphed into not only my full-time job, but my family's full lifestyle. <laughs> so, so it, it captured my heart. I mean, uh, there was it was a total randomness, and, and that's what's kind of neat, I'll say to all of you, is I had no idea that this would be my thing uh, at any point in my life. I didn't even have kids at that point. I didn't even know what Ronald McDonald was on the hospital, but I was like, well, I can clean, I can cook. And there we go. And uh, you, you'll find it. And when you find it, you'll know it. And it, it is awesome. So, you know, keep that in mind in your own lives and for your kids' lives to, to let them know that. Don't ever stop looking, because I'll tell you, and some people don't find one. Like, I'm kind of like a, you know, one cherry girl that it all goes into that one because I can't help myself. But you may you may stretch out and do lots of good in many places, which is equal. So, so, but that is a big shift that we will have for our budget coming forward, and hopefully how you will read more about us in events and papers and through the chamber and things we have going on, which where's my heart? We really love people like